question of life is a beach and life is always a beach when we're in the beach and today we're in a Ford Cortina at the World Travel Market and I'm with Robin Ball from Champion Tours. So Robin tell me a little bit about yourself. Well my career for the sporting career really started way back in you know, a varsity at UCT I was coaching youth football at a, at a young club in Rondebosch called Regazal FC I was looking after under 12s and 14s and 16s where I actually bumped into coaching Gavin Hunt who's now the head coach of Supersport United Oh my word, really? He's a wonderful guy He played he played center, center midfield or center back in his junior days captain South Africa at under 16 level in youth football and went on to of course coach uh, teams like uh, Supersport United when they actually won three PSL leagues consecutively. And then he won another one for Wits University under Bidvest Wits. They won their first trophy after 98 years wow. of football in the leagues. And that's been a long ride, huh? It's been a long ride. I mean, if you think about that, that's, well, I mean, I turned 67, 9th of March, uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I feel strong, ready to go again. COVID has been a distraction, a pause for COVID, as I say, <laughs> three years of pause. A pause for reflection. A pause for reflection. And uh, I think a lot of the tourism industry has been suffering because of, of the COVID. It's still prevalent in China and Australia even, and it has, it has a bitter effect on the rest of the world as well. But these people are coming, traveling again this year, not 23, traveling again particularly the sports which involves my passion for sports tours, travel and tours around the world, watching, whether you're watching cricket or rugby or soccer, those World Cup events, and of course follow the Springboks, it's African terms, both home and away, uh, let you see the world. You know, so after that time I've, I've managed to find myself with a lot of clients who, over the years um, we'll keep traveling and want to keep traveling, particularly the corporates who want to be doing something to incentive for their staff, uh, whether it's sales incentives or um, uh, let's call it. Uh, uh, yeah, you, you can also do birthdays, you can also say anything. like a 70th birthday, you can give a gift of a sports yeah, tour, because it may course. be something that the person has never really done in their lives, and now they're able to go and see their favourite um, uh, Formula One, they can go and see their favourite cricket team play, yeah. and they sometimes have never left town. Quite right, a lot of people haven't lived South Africa, so the travelling overseas is an adventure for everybody, um, no matter where you're going to, and we go to, we've been right across from as west as Mexico and USA, all the way across to the east, to being to being going to New Zealand, uh, has been an exciting time, particularly in the rugby world, where those top teams are playing each other. Now at the Rugby World Cup taking place in France, in September, October 23, they are able to watch games against other teams they never played before. So even a team like Namibia, who haven't ever won a game in the rugby in the Rugby World Cup event. They have the opportunity this time of beating Uruguay, which is in their Group A, which also involves France and New Zealand. They're not likely to beat, but a chance to beat Uruguay happens to be in Leon on the Wednesday, 27th of uh, September. And that's something which the guys have a lot of, lot of chance to see that, but they probably wouldn't have watched Namibia even play locally, but now they can watch them and break a record for them to qualify, well, let's say win their first game in the Rugby World Cup. Well, I think one of the good things about sports tours is I always believe sports brings people together. Um, it's the one thing in our lives that your child will play cricket and you'll go and watch your child play cricket. Um, your your dad will play cricket and you'll go and watch dad play cricket. So it's very much a family orientated thing as well. And people always think it's for drunken South Africans. But it's actually not. It's really for an entire family to enjoy. If I look at how many people are starting to go overseas as a family to watch the rugby... I mean, that's been a trend that's been coming for a while because it doesn't mean to say that you have to... The rugby match is only an hour and a half. Correct. The rest Correct. of the trip is what comes with it. And a lot of Africans are now starting to get involved. And I think that in itself, just people from Africa is really, really cool. Definitely. I think that the African countries, um, and I've noticed it on your African rally, that you'll be visiting 11 countries in Africa. 
going yeah. all the way up to Kenya um, through, the, through what we got in smaller countries like Botswana, Zambia, all the way up. Um, you, these countries also play sport as well. So Absolutely. whether we meet them along the way, whether they join, I've met people from Kenya who come on my my uh, rugby tours, even though they, they're better at sevens rugby than 15s rugby, but no matter the difference because people want to be there. People want to be at the event. People don't want to watch you on TV. No, they, they did that there. in COVID and look how much we missed our fellow human beings. I mean, Saturday we were at the Viena Waterfront and they've now, uh, the, the, the rugby is now at Greenpoint Stadium. And of course, the, the traffic was just horrible. The HL but Stadium. people mm-hmm. sat in that traffic because they wanted to be with another human being. Yeah. They wanted to sit in that traffic because you know what? We haven't done it for such a long time. So it's really awesome. So tell me a little, Robin, you have been in the sporting industry forever. What's your favorite sport? Do you have a favorite? Um, uh, to, to me, uh, it's hard to choose really because every sport's got a, got a features in it, moments in it that make the difference. So, you know, having, be, having played rugby at school, uh, matric level in 73, uh, playing rugby has always been exciting for me, although I was never a great player. I think just being a participant, playing in a team, which is, I enjoy playing in a team. So even when I was uh, playing cricket, being an early batsman number three, still played in the team, which is important. Even the, but the 11 people on the team, cricket team, so you've got to be contributing for that. Absolutely. And, so, and of course, I can't forget about the times I've had going to Anfield for Liverpool. I've been a Liverpool supporter for the last 35 years. We never changed. The red man. The red man. But you know what? Ironically, you know, Man United also red men. And even Arsenal this year... But so are the Lions. <laughs> well, let's forget the Lions, okay? Because the Lions, are actually, to be honest with you, the Lions are actually coming right because they actually won the game on Saturday in their own um, uh, in their own backyard. In their own backyard, and they actually beat the Bulls as well a couple of weeks ago. It Loftus surprising people, oh, well, although we. the Bulls actually lost <laughs> lost in Toulouse this weekend. Which wasn't didn't make me happy. I like to see the African teams doing well wherever they play. I'm a South African team supporter. Not only the Stormers, who played very, very well on Saturday in their game against Harlequins in the quarterfinal for the Heineken Champions Cup. For quarterfinal. They'll now reach the semifinals. And um, I think the Stormers are a wonderful family team. They play for each other. They'll die for each other. They really are a good side from a technical perspective. Often the teams are very individualistic. The Bulls are too individualistic, in my opinion. And that's why they haven't got the depth. Although they've got plenty of players from a depth perspective, even the Curry Cup team is a good side. So you'll see lots more happening this year in the Curry Cup because even the Griquas team would beat with the Browns on Saturday as well in a late game to the, in the venue. But uh, you've got Cheetahs teams from, from Brimbadeen. You've got Pumas teams from Nelspreit. Those teams are, oh, that's their best teams. Pumas are the best teams in Nelspreit. Cricket's best teams in Kim- Kimberley, and uh, the same thing with the Chiefs, best teams in Bloomington. So those teams are competing against Western Branch, which doesn't feature the eight Springboks in the Curry Cup team. It's like one level below the top team. So clearly, Robin, for president of sports in South Africa, because no, 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 you no, know no. so much about sports. No, no, I can't. I can't pretend to be. No, but you don't. You just. You know what? You know a lot about what we as as as. Um, as supporters and as people who watch the game, it's really nice to know that there's somebody like you we can call and get sure. some. Not 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 the technical stuff, but it's it's great to to see. Yeah, you I'm not a rule maker. Somebody. I'm not a rule no. maker. I'm a rule maker. I sometimes wonder at the, the way the rules are changing and rugby world cup itself. I need to look at that situation right now where people are running into each other, head banging each other, and not purposely possibly, but against the rules. But there are too many red cards. Which take you out the game after 10 minutes, Absolutely. which pulls the game. No, that gives the other side to 14 men only. Yeah. Or getting a yellow card, which then cost them 10 minutes in the bin and come back again. But there are too many of those incidents, which shouldn't really be handled in such a way. They need to change the rules a bit. So, what are we looking at this year? What are the big, what are the big well, events the big, this year? The biggest thing for me this year is quite simply the Springboks defending the Webb Ellis Trophy. In in, uh, in, France. in in France, oh my word! So the first month of September 
is the group pool stages, the pool stages. With group A, you've got France and New Zealand, the top teams in pool A, and likely to win the runners up and winners. Okay. And they play the very opening game of the whole event on Friday the 8th of September in Paris. Jeez. That's France against New Zealand. The second game is actually in Marseille between England and Argentina, who are in group I can't remember now, group C or D. Yeah. They, they play each other early on in the group. And then of course the next day you've got group B, which is Africa play Scotland, also in Marseille, on the tenth of September. And it rolls week by week forward for so Africa's game they play Romania a week late in Bordeaux, seventeenth September. A week later again, uh, South Africa play Ireland, Paris, on the 3rd of September. A week later again, South Africa play their final game in the group, in the post, in the pool stages, which is actually against Tonga in Marseille. So it's the easiest ticket to get, the Tonga game, because guys don't rate that Absolutely, too highly. It's yeah. highly. It's oversold right now for the Ireland game, South Africa Ireland, because Ireland are the number one ranked team. In the world, How about wins? and France are number two team in the world. But the winners of wins and runs up of Group A will play the runners up and winners of Group B, which in, which has got South Africa, Ireland, and Scotland. So one of those three teams will win and runs up. They'll play each other across across the group for the quarterfinals, which are taking place Saturday the fourteenth of October, Sunday fifteen October. In Paris, the nine o'clock kicker in Paris in the evenings. Paris loves their food, their rugby being played late at night. Oh, in, it's wish. always trying to get back to your vehicle after the game in the bus park, which might be two miles from the stadium, and to get to there when they get out. Oh, it's a mission to get home from from the from the Paris matches because your hotel is obviously an hour away. An hour away. I know. In central Paris, even an hour away. So often we're staying on the other side of the Seine River, which is Saint Germain side. Uh, where we've got Mont hotels in Montparnasse, which is a beautiful area, um, but not far from, it's virtually central of Paris. Paris is a very busy city with, I don't know, 500 or 1,000, I don't even know the number. I don't deal with all the hotels, of course, but the enough three-star, four-star hotels which encourage people to stay with them, okay? So even though the, the price of the hotels during the World Cup is exorbitant sometimes, and we tell people to stay for four nights over the weekend of the quarterfinal, 12 to 16, which covers the 14, 15 in between, the weekend, and move out to midweek, 16 to 19, or three nights midweek, so you can leave Paris, if you've been to Paris before, of course, you go to Brussels or to Rome or to Monaco to do something outside of Paris, because if you've been, you've been, you've been before, you've done enough. Absolutely. You know, so the guys are coming for the semifinals, the guys who win the quarterfinals will play in the semifinals the next weekend, Saturday the 21st, Sunday the 22nd of, of uh, October. They'll play each other, semifinal one, semifinal two, they'll play in the final. The winners of the, of the semifinal will play in the final. The finals a week later, on the Saturday 28th of October, the, what we call the bronze, which is the third and fourth playoff game on the Friday night, which is actually good because you haven't got to wait the whole weekend. Oh, that's right, yeah. So it's very nice to say you actually can leave Paris, technically, which is very hard to get to the day after the final, because everybody's wanting to leave after the final. You have another 90,000 people who came to attend the match. Most of them are, are out. Let's say half the people have come from outside. So you, to fly out the day after the final is very hard to get. So it takes... I tell my clients rather leave on the not the Sunday but the Monday or Tuesday leave there and go via there's no direct flights back to South Africa always there are direct flights but double the price to Absolutely. go by Air France double the price with its economy or business class double the price it's not worth your while rather go home via the Middle East Dubai Emirates on the Emirates or Doha via Doha on the way on, on, on um, Qatar or as we're doing, we opted to rather go from Cairo. So we fly Joburg, Cairo, Paris. And coming home is obviously Paris, Cairo. But we jump off in Cairo and spend two days or six days in Cairo. A lot of clients have never been to Cairo before. It's Egypt, amazing, hey? It's a beautiful place. The old city areas are pre-Arab Spring launching. And with a lot of fighting and nonsense going on. 
in Cairo, but subsequently to all that nonsense, a new Cairo has been forming into the desert. They built a good track such line a bonus. of 40 stations, um, like the Khao train, but yeah. 40 stations on a line, a new parliament, a new, a new area, a, a new beautiful area, lots of great shopping, on the new, what we call New Cairo, and it's a new museum even. Oh, that's so awesome! So people have moved all the artifacts from the old museum near the Nile River to out there near the near the pyramids and Sphinx. The, the new the new museum is on the highways near the new airport. The new airport coming up there even. So they don't all block the current airport in Cairo because it gets very busy. So now where do we find you so that we can book with you and fly with you and visit the world with you? Because clearly you have this amazing well, this amazing vision for where sport is going. I, I would like to think for me the most um, competitive element of my business is that I like to deal on WhatsApp. So I deal with people on WhatsApp so my number is quite simply is plus two seven six two six one seven five nine four zero. And, and the, the website? The website, the best website has been launched last week. The website is championarising.cza, where the new website is up and running. And you'll pick up all the latest because a lot of interaction is happening with the media and with the, the current sports writers, whether it be cricket or soccer or rugby or Grand Prix or the, or the Summer Olympics in France next year. 2024 starts Brilliant. on the 26th of July, ends on closing the 11th of August. So we're already selling the Summer Olympics for next year because we've got a full range of 30 sports, women's and wow. men's, and active, active times. So we, we've got that available to you. And you're clearly you. ready for, I'm ready for 2023, well. 2024, well, I've done doesn't six. really matter, 2026. No, we go, we're going on, we're going on because, <laughs> you know, you roll in every year, uh, every four years, the World Cup takes place. And in between the normal Springbok test matches or other test matches, there's always something to watch somewhere. You know, whether you're going to watch Man United play at Old Trafford or, or Wembley, it's all the these thing. happening things. FA Cup final is going to be Wembley this year. Champions League final is going to be in Istanbul. Absolutely. And they remind me so much of the good moments they were from the previous history. And Robin, it's been such a pleasure having you in our car studio here at WTM and hearing so much more about what you've got planned for us. Um, guys, if you want to get hold of Robin, he's easy to get hold of either through I'm his a, website. My WhatsApp is easier to start because immediate yeah. action. Okay. Immediate action. Give us your WhatsApp. A plus two seven <laughs> six two six one seven five nine four zero. Or otherwise, you can catch me on the website. The latest website launched last week was championarising.co.za. And I'm Janine Preston of Life is a Beach.